Hello and welcome to this episode of Red Watch TV. Today we're going to go on a journey through a region once torn apart by separatist conflict, but has now reinvented itself as a semi-autonomous region of Russia, ruled by one of the most authoritarian and eccentric autocrats of the 21st century. Ransam Kadyrov has ruled with an iron fist since his selection for the presidency by Vladimir Putin more than 15 years ago. From his bizarre, self-obsessed image he betrays on social media, Kadyrov has been the subject of ridicule by the outside world, but is also feared by the people he persecutes at home. He's used his social media profile to portray a distorted and twisted view of the country he rules like a medieval warlord. Protected by his hero Vladimir Putin and a vast militia under his direct control, he has shamelessly tried to ingratiate himself with Hollywood and sporting elites through spectacular parties held in his honour, as well as an unshakable belief in his own cultural and sporting prowess. Join us as we enter the world of Chechnya's Mad King. Born on the 5th of October 1976, in the Cheche and English Autonomous Oblast of Soviet Russia, Ramzan Akhmadovich Kadyrov grew up in the turbulence of war and political instability. His father, Akhmad Kadyrov, was a strong influence in his life, shaping his involvement in Chechnya's political and military establishments. The early 1990s saw a tumultuous period in Chechnya. The collapse of the Soviet Union saw many former Soviet republics, such as Ukraine and Georgia, break away and form independent sovereign nations. Chechnya tried to follow suit. However, as a region of Russia and not a full Soviet Republic, they lacked the legitimacy and autonomy that other areas of the former USSR had. Chechnya then descended into several years of chaotic power struggles as the region attempted to assert its independence. This would provide the backdrop for Kadyrov's earlier years. Finally, in late 1994, then Russian President Boris Yeltsin announced he would employ all means at the state's disposal to crush Chechen demands for independence. He ordered the start of a major armoured assault on the capital Grozny in an attempt to crush the fledgling republic once and for all and bring it back under Moscow's control. In echoes of the failed Russian advance on Kyiv some 30 years later, the Russians attempted to use overwhelming force to seize the Chechen capital from multiple directions and bring about a swift, decisive victory. However, almost immediately, the attack ran into major problems. The hastily arranged and poorly organised Russian assault rapidly descended into a shambolic advance that would prove to be an international embarrassment for the Kremlin. Russian tanks, completely unprepared for urban warfare, approached the city in tightly packed parade columns. The untrained, ill-equipped conscripts were set upon by thousands of determined Chechen fighters, who quickly turned the city streets into a death trap for Russian armour. So confused and disordered was the Russian attack that Russian units fought each other for hours on end before realising they were firing on their own side. Initially, Ramzan Kadyrov, like his father, sided with the Islamic separatists seeking Chechen independence. Akhmad Kadyrov formed a militia similar to the Mujahideen of Afghanistan, calling for jihad against Russia during the First Chechen War. The war ended in a humiliating stalemate that left Chechnya with a degree of independence that the Kremlin was desperately hoping to avoid. Despite the young Kadyrov's early alignment with the separatist movement, the tides of loyalty were soon to shift. The uneasy peace would last for only a few short years. A series of apartment bombings rocked Russian cities. The Russian security forces were quick to point the finger at Chechen militants, although many have speculated that the FSB might have been behind the bombings. In 1999, Vladimir Putin, Russia's new prime minister, ordered a revitalised Russian military to launch a massive all-out attack against the region once again. Russian warplanes launched a devastating series of bombings against the capital Grozny and the surrounding countryside. With little regard for the suffering of civilians, the Russians utilised their superiority in heavy artillery to mercilessly pound the Chechens into submission, leaving the capital Grozny in ruins. Several years later, in 2003, the UN would declare Grozny as the most destroyed city on earth. The Second Chechen War saw a notable change in the Kadyrov family's allegiance. In the late 1990s, both Akhmad and Ramzan Kadyrov abandoned Chechnya's separatist movement and switched their loyalties to Russia, 
a move that would fundamentally alter the course of Ramzan's life. Following Russia's eventual victory, Putin placed Chechnya under direct Kremlin control, and in 2003, Akhmad Kadyrov was installed as president of Chechnya, with the young Ramzan serving as the chief of security. Upon Ahmad Kadyrov's assassination in a bombing in May 2004, Ramzan's trajectory to power began in earnest. The then 27-year-old commander of his father's former militia was flown to Moscow to receive personal condolences from Putin. This meeting marked the beginning of a powerful alliance, as Ramzan was appointed as the first deputy prime minister. Kadyrov's loyalty to Putin began to bear fruit as he assumed the role of acting prime minister in November 2005, and by March 2006, he was officially installed as Prime Minister. By 2007, upon reaching the required minimum age of 30, Putin nominated Kadyrov as Chechen president, a position he continues to hold to this day. Throughout this period, Kadyrov retained the allegiance of an ever-growing Kadyrovsky militia group, committed to suppressing any remaining separatist elements through any means necessary. Kadyrov's unwavering loyalty to Putin has been a defining feature of their relationship. He has referred to himself as Putin's foot soldier and pledged to fulfil any military command from Russia's commander-in-chief. The two men developed a symbiotic relationship, with Putin needing Kadyrov's forces, notorious for their brutality, as an integral means in maintaining stability and suppressing unrest in the rebellious North Caucasus. Kadyrov, on the other hand, is wholly dependent on Moscow's backing, with as much as 80% of his government's revenues coming directly from the Kremlin's coffers, and the power of the Russian state providing the ultimate guarantor of his control. Under Kadyrov's iron-fisted rule, dissent is ruthlessly crushed, with reports of wide-ranging human rights abuses. Despite international criticism, Putin has stood by Kadyrov, relying on him to maintain stability in Chechnya. Although clearly lacking many of the usual qualities and characteristics one would expect of a good leader, Kadyrov had one quality that Putin valued above all else, unfailing loyalty. Since his nomination to the Chechen presidency by Russian President Vladimir Putin in 2007, Kadyrov has been at the centre of accusations of corruption and numerous human rights abuses by both national and international NGOs. Despite the controversies, Kadyrov has no reservations about showing off his fabulous wealth for the cameras at every opportunity. A documentary called The Family alleges a systemic corruption endemic in the Republic, detailing how Kadyrov allegedly finances his opulent lifestyle through an extrajudicial fund generated from a tax imposed on his own people. In a region of Russia blighted by poverty, Kadyrov and his family enjoys a lifestyle scarcely imaginable to many ordinary Chechens who struggle to make a basic living. From extravagant palaces to a range of luxury cars, Kadyrov and his cronies sit at the centre of a vast web of corruption where the wealth of the region is funnelled directly into their pockets. According to the film, Kadyrov extorts what can only be described as an unofficial tax from all Chechen citizens to fuel the Ahmad Kadyrov Regional Public Fund, named after his late father. It is reported that the amount levied varies depending on an individual's employment, with public sector workers expected to donate 10% of their monthly income and business owners required to contribute up to half of their earnings. The monthly revenue of this ostensibly lawless fund, which is not subject to tax, is estimated to be around 50 to $70 million per month. In a glaring testament to Kadyrov's apparent opulence, his youngest son Adam was recently photographed wearing a $1.4 million diamond-encrusted watch. These ostentatious displays of wealth stand in stark contrast to the average salary in Chechnya, which in August 2022 was estimated to be around $500 US per month. Such extrajudicial taxes might be more palatable if the money in the Kadyrov Fund was being reinvested into the economy and providing badly needed public services to Chechen citizens. However, Kadyrov instead chose to spend part of the money gifting 16 new motorcycles to one of Russia's most notorious far-right biker gangs. Kadyrov was inducted into Russia's biggest biker gang, the Nightwolves, according to posts from his Instagram account. The news came after a gala dinner he hosted in their honour, which he was reportedly handed a bracelet of the club, serving as proof of his membership. 
Kadyrov has always shown enthusiasm for the Night Wars, applauding their political support and their actions in Crimea. The group has close ties with Russian President Vladimir Putin, who has led several bike parades and personally awarded the Night Wolves leader, Alexander Zaldostanov, known as the Surgeon, with a Medal of Honor for his work in patriotic youth education. These reports paint a sobering picture of life in Chechnya, where the disparity between Kadyrov's luxurious lifestyle and frivolous spending of public funds contrasts sharply with the hardships endured by ordinary citizens. Kadyrov courted controversy again in the 2011 elections after sailing to another victory with a ridiculous 98% of the vote. The Chechen strongman chose to celebrate his victory by appearing at his ceremony wearing a full suit of medieval armour. In a video shared on his YouTube page, he can be seen donning a conical helmet, a longsword strapped to his waist and a spear in his hand. He was conspicuously the only person in attendance dressed in armour, adding to the weird and eccentric atmosphere. The event had been billed as a quote, solemn reception to honour Chechnya's women. However, his choice of attire served as a convenient reminder to women that their leader, his attitudes and his approach to governance lay many centuries in the past. Ironically, Kadyrov's relationship with Russian President Vladimir Putin often mirrors the power dynamic between a feudal king and his vassals. Choosing to mark his re-election by holding court at a medieval banquet served as another insight into the mind of Chechnya's warlord leader. As critics note, the 2% who dare to vote against him may now watch their backs for fear of retribution from a leader who is no stranger to terrorising dissenters. In a country that prides itself on protecting traditional values, haunting stories of human rights abuses against the LGBT community have become depressingly common. Reports have surfaced of anti-gay purges as well as special prison camps being set up in Chechnya. The international community has largely remained silent on this issue, and despite scattered news reports and documentaries, the plight of the victims remains largely ignored by the outside world. In a series of revelations dating back to 2017, independent Russian newspaper Novaya Gazeta and human rights campaigners have alleged that the Chechen authorities orchestrated purges of men perceived to be gay or bisexual. According to the award-winning documentary, Welcome to Chechnya, men are not the only victims of these assaults. Lesbians too have become subject to terrible ordeals, often at the hands of their own family members. The atmosphere of fear has become so pervasive that men began fleeing Chechnya in 2017. My life is ruined, I cannot go back, and it's not safe here either, one victim identifies as Magomed, told Human Rights Watch. His chilling statement encapsulates the desperate reality of many Chechen men, some of whom face threats even after escaping to countries as far as Canada. Chechen authorities operate with apparent impunity. Critics of the government and those deemed undesirable face a ruthless security apparatus with little chance of recourse. Interestingly, Kadyrov, who denies the very existence of the LGBT community in Chechnya and has justified and encouraged so-called honour killings by their families, while his administration has refused to prosecute such crimes. In 2017, he responded to questions about anti-gay programmes by stating this. У нас таких людей нету. Нету у нас геев. Если есть, заберите в Канаду, хвала Аллаху, подальше от нас. А у забедляем на шейтуан режим, да. Чтобы не было, да. Чтобы очистили кровь, да. Если есть таких, пусть забирают. Да. Despite calls from more than 30 countries for a thorough investigation into the alleged persecution, global action has been minimal. Many Western countries have failed to provide a safe haven for LGBT Chechens fleeing persecution. This lack of decisive action only serves to embolden brutal autocrats like Kadyrov and Putin, setting a dangerous precedent for further human rights abuses worldwide. In a move that's pretty typical of Kadyrov's unorthodox style, he announced in 2016 that he'd be running an apprentice-style reality show in order to recruit a new minister to the loosely defined position of Head of Strategic Development. 
State-run Russian television channel Russia One announced the launch of Commander, Russian for Team, which was the name chosen for the show designed to recruit a new henchman to Kadyrov's regime. The contestants are subject to a series of grueling and largely pointless tasks that include cooking, dancing, and running up mountains. How any of these challenges are designed to determine the contestants' suitability for delivering on policies of economic reform are never really made clear. But that's not really the point of the show. It's really nothing more than a shameless attempt at self-promotion for a fragile, image-obsessed despot. For the most part, contestants mostly just follow Kadyrov around, doing his normal Instagram routine, riding horses, boxing, dancing, and recounting likely fictional stories from his past. The show is designed to offer a glimpse into the redevelopment of Chechnya's capital, Grozny. The city, which had been reduced to rubble under relentless Russian attacks over two wars in the 1990s, now boasts tall, gleaming buildings, illustrating the transformation. The show is designed to paint a picture of a modern, resurgent Chechnya, thriving under Kadyrov's rule, a stark contrast to the image painted by many human rights organizations that accuse him of abductions and extrajudicial executions. Kadyrov eventually chose a 24-year-old Filip Varyachenko as the ultimate winner. Varyachenko, a self-described millionaire from Dusseldorf, who expressed his fatigue at European comforts, was selected by Kadyrov. Despite his victory, very little is known about Varyachenko, with the only public record being a website that identifies him as part of a theatre group of US-based Russian Christians. The Moscow Times managed to secure a phone interview with Varyachenko from Grozny, lifting the veil on Kadyrov's latest PR venture. Varyachenko remained tight-lipped about the specifics of his background, but confirmed his Russian heritage, citing his upbringing and family as a core to his Russian mentality. Chechnya, known for its turbulent past and controversial leadership, found itself in the global spotlight again due to a grand football match involving some of the best-known names in the sport. The spectacle, organised by Chechen President Ranzam Kadyrov, saw Brazilian football legends such as Romário, Dunga, Bobeto and Cafu play against a team led by Kadyrov himself. The game took place in Grozny, Chechnya's capital, and resulted in a 6-4 victory for the Brazilian All-Stars against Kadyrov's team, which included current players from the local team Terek Grozny, former players from the national teams of the Soviet Union and Russia, and former German midfielder Lothar Mateus, who now coaches Bulgaria. President Kadyrov, who lost weight to participate in the match, scored two of the four goals for his team, despite his penalty taking requiring some work. The spectacle was free for the public to attend, with thousands of fans swarming the stadium despite a significant security presence. The atmosphere was celebratory and patriotic, with President Kadyrov setting the stage with cries of God is great and performing a traditional Chechen dance at half-time, along with a massive fireworks display. The President has publicly asserted that this event was intended to demonstrate Chechnya's recovery from years of separatist conflict. He stated, They write everywhere about the killings and explosions in the Chechen Republic, particularly in Europe. They write that Kadyrov is bad, and Russia is bad. There is no normal life for the people. And we are showing today that the population of one million on the territory of the Chechen Republic is developing sports, education and culture, and we're rebuilding an honourable future. Despite the controversy surrounding Kadyrov, the football legends from Brazil were said to have played out of respect for the Chechen people, and were reportedly not paid to appear. Kadyrov cited some of his friends helping Brazil recover from flooding as the motivation for their participation. Critics argue that this high-profile event is part of an ongoing campaign to attract international football stars to Chechnya and boost the local image. Among these endeavours is the hiring of former Dutch football star Ruud Hullet as Terek Grozny's coach and the construction of a new stadium in an attempt to mark Chechnya as a football destination on the global map. Whether the presence of these international stars in Chechnya marks the advent of a new period of development or simply acts as a distracting spectacle from ongoing issues wasn't clear. For now, it's clear that the intersection of politics, football and international celebrities in Chechnya has caught the world's attention. These attempts to mark Chechnya on the football map soon took a knock during a Russian Premier League match. The match, which took place at Grozny's Akhmad Arena, was between Kadyrov's Terek Grozny and the visiting team, Ruben Kazan from Tataristan. 
Stunned fans witnessed a dramatic outburst from the Chechen president during the 83rd minute when the referee was sending off Tarek captain Rizvan Utsiev. An outraged Kadyrov stormed over to the stadium's public address system, grabbed the microphone and began bellowing insults at the referee, calling him a sellout and a donkey. The Chechen leader's voice boomed throughout the stadium, creating an unforgettable scene, with his outrage later confirmed on his Instagram account. Despite initial reports suggesting the announcer had lost his temper, Kadyrov unapologetically revealed that it was indeed him who had vented his frustration over the loudspeaker. Yes, it was me, Ramzan Kadyrov, he officially announced on his Instagram account. However, Kadyrov refused to apologise to the, quote, bought referee. Kadyrov further stoked tensions rather than attempting to smooth them over. The game was just awful because of the biased referee, Kadyrov said. The groundless second yellow card, Vutsiev, and an obvious penalty kick that we were not awarded. He did everything to change the result of the game. Kadyrov continues to perplex observers with his erratic public image. A brutal strongman with a medieval approach to governance, Kadyrov has found an unlikely stage to project a starkly different persona, Instagram. Kadyrov's Instagram account paints a picture of an affable, animal-loving leader who rubs shoulders with film stars, all while he stands accused of human rights abuses and extreme authoritarian rule. Since his ascent to power, Kadyrov has used violence and fear to maintain control. Yet before his social media ban, he used the internet to craft an alternative narrative for his nearly 3 million followers. His online persona suggests nothing of his brutal past. Instead, he posts images of himself cuddling kittens, mixing with film stars, and showcasing his affinity for traditional dress. One notable instance saw him posting pictures with actress Liz Hurley and a white kitten following her arrival in Chechnya for a film project. Despite his brutal reputation, Kadyrov's deft use of social media to create a more palatable image showcases a modern facet of autocratic rule. His juxtaposition of brutal repression and social media savviness offers a disturbing glimpse into the world of a 21st century tyrant. In another lavish and controversial display of opulence, Chechen leader Ramzan Kadyrov celebrated his 35th birthday with a grandiose event. Despite earlier statements from Kadyrov prohibiting any public celebrations or special magazine editions dedicated to his birthday, the celebration was anything but subdued. High-profile guests including Hollywood stars Hilary Swank and Jean-Claude Van Damme and violinist Vanessa May attended the festivities. Swank said at the event, So wonderful to be here tonight. Thank you so much for inviting me to your beautiful city. Really, truly for me, this is a, a great honor to learn more about you and your country and what you're building. And um, happy birthday, Mr. President. Van Damme, in an even more enthusiastic display, reportedly declared, I love you, Mr. Kadyrov. These Western celebrities were reportedly paid hefty fees to participate in the celebration. Notably, May was reported to have received $500,000 for her performance. When asked where the money for such expenses was coming from, Kadyrov reportedly responded, Allah gives it to us. I don't know, it comes from somewhere. However, according to Sky News, the funding reality is that it comes from the Kremlin. His embrace by Western celebrities has thus sparked global conversation. These instances highlight the growing concern around celebrities aligning themselves with authoritarian figures, offering them a veneer of prestige and respectability, often in exchange for large sums of money. In an era of easy access to information about the records of controversial leaders, such choices by celebrities are bound to spark intense debate. As this event showed, even amid the glitz and glamour of celebrity culture, political realities remain a significant and inescapable part of Kadyrov's story. As we end our journey through Kadyrov's past, this brings us to his present-day involvement in Russia's brutal war against Ukraine. With the Russian war machine floundering at the gates of Kyiv against determined Ukrainian resistance, Russia's President Vladimir Putin once again turns to his loyal foot soldier. According to Ukrainian intelligence and security officials, Putin initially entrusted Kadyrov with a high-stakes mission, occupy Kyiv's government headquarters and assassinate Ukraine President Vladimir Zelensky. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov vehemently denied these allegations, branding them absolutely absurd, baseless and false. This would not be the first time Putin has tapped Kadyrov, whom he has financially supported for decades, 
According to documents and interviews with Ukrainian officials and people close to the Kremlin, the Chechen warlord has been instrumental in propping up Putin's system and fulfilling Russia's wartime demands. The Chechen leader controls his native region as a personal fiefdom, using billions of dollars from Moscow to rule with an iron fist. This funding buttresses Kadyrov's power in a predominantly Muslim region, where, according to residents and analysts, he is despised by many. Despite Kadyrov's controversial reputation, Putin relies heavily on him for the Ukraine war effort, offering him a direct line of contact. They discuss war strategies, including the deployment of two Chechen battalions to the front lines. Kadyrov publicly criticises Russia's defence ministry, and his readiness to blame high-ranking officials by name for failures on the battlefield shows his unique influence in Russia's political sphere. The US has repeatedly sanctioned Kadyrov for alleged human rights violations at home, such as cracking down on remaining separatists, threatening urban elites who protest the invasion, and persecuting anyone who opposes him. Despite international criticism, the Kremlin pays around $6.5 billion into Chechnya's coffers annually, according to Kadyrov's public statement. Three weeks before the invasion of Ukraine, Ukrainian intelligence officials claimed that Putin assigned Kadyrov the task of taking Kyiv and killing the Ukrainian president. However, the Chechens met with stiff resistance on the ground and their mission to seize the capital failed. Despite facing setbacks and severe losses, Kadyrov announced the formation of four new battalions in June 2022 and continued to expand his operations. His troops have taken on the role of disciplining soldiers and rooting out alleged spies in occupied Ukrainian territories. Amid the turmoil of war, Kadyrov's loyalty to Putin remains unwavering. As dissent over Russia's handling of the war emerged in Moscow, Kadyrov positioned himself as a bulwark against internal unrest, threatening retribution to anyone who disrespected Putin or Russia. As we've discussed at length in this video, Kadyrov is a lover of social media. Chechen soldiers, known as the Kadyrovsky, have found their way into the global limelight, not just for their roles in the battlefield, but for their affinity for TikTok videos. The Kadyrovsky, named after the Chechen leader, are combining traditional battlefield footage with contemporary social media platforms. Their TikTok presence has generated an array of content. Videos range from slickly produced footage that shows their military might to clips that project a less conventional side of warfare. Despite the serious undertones of their presence in Ukraine, these soldiers have gained a reputation for their obsession with aesthetics and have been mocked widely online. This use of TikTok by the Kadyrovsky has been noted by international observers and analysts. Kadyrov needs advertising to maintain his horrifying image, the image of Putin's foot soldier, who is especially close to Putin, commented Pavel Luzin, a Russia-based defense analyst with the Jamestown Foundation, a Washington DC-based think tank. However, their social media bravado does not reflect their true battlefield potential. Marat Gabudulin, a former Russian mercenary who fought alongside Chechen fighters in Syria, raised questions about their military prowess. Gabadulin contends that their videos do not demonstrate any well-calculated military action and are mostly staged. He said, Their success is definitely inflated. I think that they added very little to the military potential of invading forces. The Ukrainian media have not held back in ridiculing the footage. Headlines such as Kadyrov's TikTok forces posted a video of their real fight with a traffic light and an empty building reflect a dismissive attitude towards the Kadyrovsky social media escapades. In a world where reality and online narratives often collide, the Kadyrovsky stand an example of how TikTok and other social media platforms are shaping the modern battlefield narratives. While their videos might portray them as formidable warriors, their actual contributions and credibility on the ground remain subject to debate. As we come to the end of this episode of Red Watch TV, we reflect on the bizarre and scary world of Ramzan Kadyrov's Chechnya. More meme than man, the tyranny of his rule encompasses a strange blend of 21st century social media savvy, along with the worst instincts of a medieval warlord. In a society that's deeply rooted in its rich cultural traditions, Kadyrov has worked tirelessly to style himself as a defender of those values. He shamelessly manipulates Chechen's sense of cultural identity to claim that it's his regime that's buttressing the region from the exposure to the worst excesses of Western degeneracy. 
However, Kadyrov's position might not be as secure as it seems. The aborted Wagner mutiny in June 2023 has shown how vulnerable his master's position in the Kremlin might be. Kadyrov, more than anyone else, needs the continuation of Vladimir Putin's presidency. Putin has foolishly traded away the Russian state's monopoly on violence to henchmen like Prigozhin and Kadyrov in order to secure short-term loyalties. Should Putin be removed from power, Kadyrov might suddenly find that Chechnya's separatist instincts emerge once again. To many Chechens who remember the horrors of the 1990s, Kadyrov will always remain a turncoat, a traitor to the people he once fought for. Should Putin fall, it might be Kadyrov that suddenly finds that it's him who has to deal with an insurrection of his own. Thanks for watching this episode of Red Watch TV. If you enjoyed this journey through Kadyrov's world, don't forget to hit the like button below and subscribe to our channel for more episodes. Before we go, we want to hear your opinions on Kadyrov's rule. What do you think of his unfailing loyalty to Putin and his approach to ruling Chechnya? How do you think things will ultimately end for Ramzan Kadyrov? Comment below and we'll see you next time.